factoring general trinomials. And the difference here is that the coefficient in front of the x squared term is no longer 1. That does make the problem quite a bit more difficult. So here we have a nice little technique to run through that will enable you to factor these, but you've got to pay close attention because it's not as simple. So how do we do that? Well, the trick is to rewrite this trinomial as a polynomial of four terms. In other words, we're going to break up the middle term, the x to the first power term, into the sum of two middle terms. And what will then go in front of these two x's will add up to negative 8, but what will those two numbers be? That's the trick. And the way to find that is to say to yourself, when I add them up, the sum of the two numbers must equal the negative 8. And when you multiply these two numbers together, the product of the two numbers must equal to the product of the outer two numbers, 12 and 1, which is 12. So you're looking for two numbers whose sum are negative 8 and whose product are 12. Well, the only way to get a product of 12 and the sum of negative 8 would be to have, uh, how about 2 and 6? 2 times 6, and especially since they add up to negative 8, they both must be negative. So if you multiply a negative 2 times a negative 6, you will get a positive 12, and if you add them together, you'll get a negative 8. That means that the two middle terms now will have these two coefficients, so we end up with a negative 2x and a negative 6x. So that's how we rewrite the trinomial into a, a polynomial with four terms, and now we use the grouping technique to go ahead and factor this. So again, to revisit re what we just did, we're going to rewrite the trinomial as a polynomial with four terms. We're looking for the coefficients of these two. The coefficients can be found by saying when you add them together, you should get back this number right here, which is negative 8. And when you multiply the two numbers together, that should be equal to the product of the two outer numbers, the coefficient here and the number there. So when you multiply those two together, you get 12, which means that the product of those two numbers must be 12 as well. So once you've written it this way, then you go ahead and start grouping them like so. You then factor out a common factor out of each of those two. So in the first case, we can factor out a 2x, and we're left with a 6x minus 1. And here, since we want to end up with the same 6x minus 1, we're going to factor out a negative 1, so minus 1 times 6x minus 1. And now you go ahead and look at this, and you realize that now with these two terms right here, we can factor out a 6x minus 1. Don't forget my, negative, my equal signs. So when I factor out a 6x minus 1, I have left on this side a 2x, and I have on this side a minus 1, and I went ahead and factored that original problem. All right, now that you saw how to do this problem like this, we're going to do the exact same technique over there. We're going to rewrite this problem in, with four terms. So this is 35x squared. We have a plus 8 at the end, and we're going to rewrite the middle term in terms of the sum of two terms, two middle terms. The rules are that when you add the two coefficients together, the sum must equal 34. And the product, the product of those two coefficients must equal the product of those two numbers. So the product must equal to 35 times 8, and 8 times 30, that's 240, 8 times 5 is 40, so the sum would be 280, or the product, I should say. And so what are those two, what are those two numbers? Well, you're looking for two numbers that add up to 34, and when you multiply, they, they give you a product of 280. So if you can't think of the numbers right away, you want to go ahead and set up a little table. Say, okay, the two numbers could be 33 and 1, but in this case, when you multiply those together, you get 33, which is not 280. They do add up to 34. How about 32 and 2? Well, that is 64. How about 31 and 3? Well, that's equal to 93. And so you can see the pattern. As you change these numbers, as long as they both add up to 34, you can see that the number gets closer and closer and closer to the number you want, 280. 
The next one would be 30 and 4, and that's 120. Uh, 29 and 5, that would be 145. And you just keep going. Of course, you don't have to try every one of them. You kind of jump maybe. You say, well, how about this one? How about uh, 25 and 9? Well, 25 and 9 is 225. You're still not quite there. How about the next one? How about if we go uh, 20 and 14? Again, every time you add them, they should add up to 34. And when you multiply this, oh, wow, look at this one. 280, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the two numbers. When I multiply, I get 280. When I add, I get 34. So these are the two numbers I'm looking for. So I write plus 20x and plus 14x. All right, now I have the right numbers. Now I'm going to go ahead and group these in groups of two, just like I did over here. And now factor out the common factor out of each group. And the common factor here would be a 5x. And I'm, I'm left with 5 goes in 35 seven times, so this is 7x, plus 5 goes in 24 times. Here I can factor out, looks like a 2, All right? So plus 2, and I'm left with a 7x plus 4. And now when you look carefully, here's two terms. Each of the two terms has a 7x plus 4. I can go ahead and factor that out. So this is equal to 7x plus 4. When I factor that out over here, I'm left with a 5x on the left side, and I'm left with a plus 2 on the right side. And here is the factored form of my original problem. So again, summarizing what we just did, you take your trinomial, you rewrite it so that you write your middle term in terms of the sum of two middle terms. You're trying to figure out what those two numbers are. The rule is that when you add them together, the sum it should add up back to what you started with. That makes sense. And the product, when you multiply these two numbers, must be equal to the product of the outside two numbers. So when we multiply 35 times 8, you get 280. That means that these two numbers multiplied together should give you 280 as well. Then you start kind of systematically going through all the possibilities. Since they have to add up to 34, you take, start with 33 and 1, 32 and 2, 31 and 3, 30 and 4, you multiply them together, and you start seeing a pattern. You start seeing the number getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So then at that point you say, well, I can jump a little further. I don't have to go one number at a time. I can go to like 25 and 20 and 15 and so forth. And so when you jump down to 25, you need a 9 to add up to 34. When you multiply them together, you get 225. So you know you're getting close. So you jump another 5 to 20 and 14. Again, when you add them together, you get 34. When you multiply, you get 280. In this case, bingo, you got the number you were looking for. So the two numbers need to be 20 and 14. Those are the coefficients of the two new middle terms. Then you group them together in two groups of two. You factor out what's common. And most of the time, because your textbook usually gives you problems, that these two will then be identical. You can then factor that out, and you're left with the 5x and the 2 to make up the second binomial.